in the next module we'll, um, we'll discuss how to put these things together for, for a very basic PCI. So um, there's a, a class of applications that's called neurofeedback. So um, you say you have a person and um, they want to um, say they want to train their ability to relax or so. So you might have a measure of, of relaxation that you try to extract from the brain and feed it back to the person and display it on a monitor such as a bar, which goes up if you're more relaxed. And you can use this to train yourself in a sense and there's a lot of applications and also quite a few commercial applications that are based on that. Uh, it turns out in many cases these are very, very basic and primitive um, systems. Use one channel and say take the amplitude of, of a single frequency such as 10 hertz in occipital cortex or so um, to, to measure um, uh, say a substitute for relaxation. Um, as I discussed um, there's certain oscillations in the brain that correspond to idling activity in neurons um, in, in the second lecture um, and so they're called idle oscillations and uh, 10 hertz is, is, is approximately the right frequency for occipital cortex, which is related to visual processing. Um, and so with the things that I uh, briefly touched on, you can already kind of dis build such a system as very simple sequence of various processing steps. So you say you do a bandpass filter to the frequency of interest, say 8 to 13 hertz. That would be, you know, this... Uh, you need the right coefficients for that. You can design them in MATLAB. Uh, then you could square this every sample of that and say we, we're doing it for one channel. And then take the moving average of that. So that's the moving average of, or, of squares. Uh, so it's basically the sum of squares. And that uh, is, in a sense, implementing something that you could say is running variance. So you calculate the variance in a signal in a moving window. Variance is, you know, right average of the second order moments. That assumes that the signal is zero mean, so it's, it doesn't have an offset. But that's already guaranteed by the bandpass filter because you removed everything lower than 8 hertz. So you have running variance, and usually a variance has this property that um, it has, you know, let's say, uh, it's, um, it's not really uniformly distributed, so, um, you know, large values obviously are you know, there's a squaring in there. And that's why at the end you probably want to take the square root again or logarithm. And so, you know, there's a static filter. Um, this is also a static filter. That's a spectral filter. And this is a temporal filter. And that's a neurofeedback solution. Uh, and in fact, this type of stuff is used in production. Uh, so uh, you can buy things <laughs> on the market which are that simple. Um, but that already, that sort of takes us to the limitations of in a sense of the, of the framework and that prompts the next step where we, where we want to be um, doing somewhat more sophisticated um, steps in here. And that takes us actually to the, to the next block.